Hi everybody, welcome back to Paleo Cooking Live. I'm Tina Wells from Living Delicious Nutrish and we are on week two of our Whole30 prep. We started Whole30 on Monday and I have a very enthusiastic group this time. I'm so grateful that everyone is raring to go in the new year and Happy New Year to everyone. I haven't been able to say that to you yet this year. I'm sure we're all pleased that 2021 is here and we have nothing but good stuff ahead. I have to turn something down on the stove. I'll be right back. I have a new recipe that I'm so excited to show you today and a couple of fun recipes that might be something you don't think about cooking every day. The, this is actually um, ground lamb and I'm going to show you two recipes with ground lamb today. Lamb isn't something that you usually have on your weekly lineup, but having a Mediterranean Greek background and growing up Greek, you know, lamb is the choice of um, pretty much everything. And as uh, Aunt Vula said in Big Fat Greek Wedding, I cook lamb. So today I cook lamb for you, okay? <laughs> the first thing I wanna show you is my lamb and beef kofta. I'm gonna show you half a recipe, but definitely follow the instructions on the website to double it up. So in this bowl, I'm starting with a half a pound of ground beef and a half a pound of ground lamb. I like to add the beef because it's a little leaner than the lamb, although the lamb contains all sorts of delicious, healthy fats. Um, but it helps when you bake these to not make them quite so um, greasy. So let me um, get this started. And I wanna see who's with us today. And I wanna say hello to Messina and to my cousin Barb, who's here. Happy New Year. Um, I think you said Buon Anno for uh, Italian Happy New Year, Messina. <laughs> Messina's joining us from Italy. Um, okay, so let's get started. We started, we have the lamb and beef here, and I'm going to add about a cup of diced onion. I already have it diced up for you save a little time of course dicing onion doesn't take long and this is diced so it is about a quarter inch size and then to that i'm going to add a clove of garlic and about a half a shallot shallots seem to be one of those things that i really love it's a nice combination onion garlic flavor and not too super strong but the shallots I've been finding lately have been all different shapes and sizes. So when I say half a shallot, I'm probably talking about two tablespoons diced, okay? And this is the interesting ingredient. This is cooked white sweet potato. You can add butternut squash, yellow sweet potato, whatever you have on hand. But the thing I love about adding sweet potatoes is it's a binder and it's cold because I cooked it yesterday. <laughs> it's a binder, which is great because now we don't need egg or breadcrumbs or even almond flour, which sometimes people have um, an intolerance to. So I'm just gonna mash that up a little bit. It is good to add it warm, a little warm, but not so hot that it's gonna start cooking the meat before you're ready to prepare it. And then I'm adding two tablespoons of paleo powder. Now the recipe gives you several options. You can do your own seasoning mix, Mediterranean mix if you have one you already like that's um, compatible for Whole30, or if you just wanna do oregano, parsley, dill, you know, your own combination. But I love this paleo powder. It's an um, autoimmune protocol seasoning from paleo powder their seasonings don't have any fillers or anti-caking agents it is kind of to the bottom of the jar and I had to stick a knife in there and stir it around a little bit but I'd rather kind of have to break it up by hand than worry about having anti-caking agents and other nasty ingredients so let's leave those out one of my favorites and you can get it if you go on my website and then the last thing that I like to add, Greeks love cinnamon in meat. I know it sounds strange, but it gives it such a delicious, savory flavor. And to that, I have um, a teaspoon of cumin and a teaspoon of coriander. Coriander is actually the seed 
of the cilantro plant, ground up. So that's what those look like. And I'm gonna sprinkle those on top. And I'm just gonna get my hands in here and work all of this together. Your fingers are your best tool and your sink is your friend. You can wash your hands a thousand times a day. <laughs> Now, when you're kneading meat like this and mixing it with your hands, you don't want to over mix it because it will tend to make the meat tough. So I'm looking for this to be well blended and I'm squeezing it through my fingers as I massage it with the palm of my hand and turning it and the beef and lamb are kind of two different colors. The beef is a darker red. So I can tell when it's pretty much blended in and it is almost there. And that looks really good, let me show you. You can see everything is kind of mixed together. You can see those onions and shallots. And now what I'm going to do, get these things out of the way, we're gonna shape football meatball shapes. I have a sheet pan here prepared with some parchment paper. Hi, Ginny, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Ginny's one of my January whole 30 years. So good to have everybody on. This is a portion scoop. They come in all different sizes. You can buy a whole set of them on Amazon. I lived and died by portion scoops when I was working in a professional kitchen. It didn't matter if we were measuring cookies or cupcakes or you name it, mashed potatoes. Portion scoops were an essential tool in a commercial kitchen and I still use mine at home. This one is probably about an ounce and a half to two ounces. This one is probably three ounces. This one is about an ounce, okay? I have a set of like five of these. I just thought I'd show you a few different ones. Even if, like I say, you're making cupcakes or let's say you're doing the prosciutto egg bake that I have on my website that's a Whole30 breakfast dish, you can use this to measure into each muffin tin and have a perfect size portion every time. You don't have any spilling over. You don't have any that aren't quite full enough. So I'm gonna use these to measure our football shaped kofta. I'm starting with the round, of course, and I'm gonna scoop out a few so you can see. And I'm leveling it off. I want it to be nice and flat and making sure that the bottom of the scoop is full. Just like that. I actually tested this recipe again for dinner last night and I was hoping to have some left over to show you already baked, but you know, hungry boys in the house. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do six because then I'll have to roll them all and I don't wanna take all day to show you this. I can finish those later. And now I'm just gonna roll it in a ball shape and then go back and forth sideways till it's almost a log and then pinch the ends. And that's a traditional kofta shape. Now in Middle Eastern cooking, sometimes they're shaped on um, skewers and roasted or barbecued. We're gonna do those in the, these in the oven. I'm just gonna shape these real fast. You can see it goes very quickly. Again, not overworking the meat, just enough to get it to hold together. And those mashed potatoes, or if you're using butternut squash, are gonna do a perfect job of giving this a nice binder, a nice starch without kneading an egg or a flour or even an almond flour. And I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees, so these will go in for about 30 minutes. Keep an eye on them because if you do them a little larger, a little smaller, the cooking time may vary, and of course everybody's ovens are different. My oven is 17 years, oh gosh, 19 years old. <laughs> Losing track of time. So that's those, okay? Very simple. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna put these in the oven, wash my hands, and I'll be right back. My 
My sink's over here. One time I got in trouble from a friend who, can you see me? Hi. <laughs> Asked me why I don't wash my hands and it was because I had already edited the video and it took all that out. So you don't have to look at an empty screen the whole time. <laughs> So the next thing I wanna show you is essentially all the same ingredients, but cooked a different way. A long time ago, I had a chef who used to say, don't memorize recipes, memorize methods. And so I never know what's, any, what's in any of my recipes these days. I only know how to put them together, which really is key. What are you gonna do with a list of ingredients if you don't know how to prepare it, right? So I've got my induction burner going here. Induction is a form of magnetic cooking. The bottom of this pan is magnetic and it conducts the heat through the magnetic process. One of these days I'm gonna get a real stove with magnetic top, but until then, this is what we have. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil. Use whatever fat you prefer. I'm just keeping it Mediterranean, so got the olive oil here. This is actually a great find, I should probably tell you. Trader Joe's sells this wonderful Kalamata olive oil for $8.99. I mean, how can you pass this up? And of course, anything Greek for me. And then to this pan, I'm gonna add some onion. Because you're gonna be so surprised when I tell you what this is. Everybody loves gyros, right? Doesn't matter how you say it. Gyro, gyro. Of course, I try to stick to the correct pronunciation. <laughs> These are gonna be gyro lettuce cups. So it's gonna be all those delicious flavors that go in a gyro, in a typical gyro that you would get at a Greek festival or at a Greek restaurant, but we're keeping it Whole30 compatible. So the first thing I'm doing is sauteing these onions. I just want them to get translucent. I'm not looking for any sort of caramelization or anything, I just want them to be soft. And then I'm adding a pound of ground lamb. This is from Nature's Rancher, which is actually Peterson Farms. I really trust their meat. Of course, you know I'm a big Butcher Box fan, but I can't always get lamb on Butcher Box, so I find this a whole food. You don't have to break the bank buying expensive meat, but for me, I prefer the meat to be sustainably raised from farmers who really care about what they're feeding their animals and how they're treated. So it's worth the price for me. Plus I find that what your animals eat, you eat. So if your animals are being fed corn and other feedlot type um, diets, that's what you're gonna eat. And since I'm staying grain free, I prefer to just eat from grass fed animals and animals that don't eat what I eat. So these onions are just about there. So I will add one clove of chopped garlic. Now I like to add the garlic after the onion because I don't want it to burn. Garlic will cook a lot faster than onion. We don't like that bitter garlic flavor, but we love our garlic. So if you like more garlic, go ahead and add more. We want this to be flavorful and bring out all the nuances of the lamb. And if you're not familiar with lamb, Ground lamb is a great way to try it. It's not a huge investment. You're not trying to figure out how to cook a leg of lamb, although I can show you how to do that too. And there's an Instant Pot lamb recipe on my website if you wanna check that out. But let's keep it simple, right? We're trying to do Whole30 prep and have things in the fridge that we can grab and go. And this is the perfect solution. Now that's just about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my meat. One pound of ground lamb. I'm gonna saute that and break it up. I'm just using this silicone spatula. You can use a wooden spoon, whatever you like to use in your kitchen. So many of these recipes are 
the kind of things that I like to eat and cook and feed my family on a regular basis. And I think that's important when you're doing Whole30 that you don't go so out of what you're typically used to eating. You want it to be something that you already enjoy. So when your 30 days is over, you're still cooking healthy things. Sometimes one of those recipes that you've been making for 20 years, you make a couple of simple swaps, like change out the mayonnaise or change out the cooking oil, and it's Whole30 compatible. Doesn't need to be complicated. So I'm just breaking this up and it's starting to brown. And it'll take a little bit, but we want it to be just right. Let me see if you have any questions. Yeah. <laughs> Ginny, you're absolutely right. The Italian version is very garlic heavy. I had a lot of Italian friends growing up. My friend Messina is one of them. And of course, Kiki's on with us, so she gets the whole Greek thing. Hi, Kiki. <laughs> so so that's still a little pink. I'm gonna set it aside, and while it's browning, it can simmer on its own. The only thing I like to make sure of is that it's really broken down into nice small pieces and it's not big chunks. You want it to almost be like a chili, ground meat, sloppy joe kind of consistency. Okay, so I'll set that aside. And I'll put these other things here for now because I wanna show you how to make the delicious classic topping for these recipes, which is tzatziki with almond milk yogurt. Let me put this away and get the ingredients for that. I'm gonna show you half a recipe on this as well. Tzatziki is one of those things that I have always enjoyed, but it's really kind of, you know, heavy and of course dairy, lots of dairy. So what I'm using in place of the traditional Greek yogurt is the Kite Hill unsweetened almond milk yogurt. You can also use coconut milk yogurt. I unfortunately haven't been able to find a good coconut milk yogurt that doesn't have a lot of added sugar. There's a little bit of liquid on the top, so I just took that off and I'm just gonna put this into a bowl. The recipe calls for two of these containers. I'm gonna show you half. And get that all out of there. And then to that, I'm adding about a clove of garlic. Now this garlic is raw, it's not getting cooked, so you don't wanna go crazy with the garlic. You wanna make sure that it's just enough without being too strong because then it starts to get hot. And then I have some lemon zest, already zested off the top of the lemon. Make sure you scrub your lemons. And this unique ingredient is just grated cucumber. It's about two tablespoons. That gives it a nice, breath, bright, fresh flavor. We'll start stirring these together. And now because the yogurt doesn't have the same fatty consistency as the traditional dairy yogurt, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil. And that really helps to give this that really unctuous mouthfeel. And I mean, could this be any easier? I'm just stirring this together. It's 30 seconds. The last thing I'm gonna add is a fresh lemon. I should have unwrapped this before, and you can tell that I already zested. I zest it first and then cut it in half. And I love my lemon squeezer because it holds all the seeds in. Now a whole recipe would call for a whole lemon. We're doing a half, so half a lemon. 
and it does look a little liquidy when you first start to mix it, but then when you refrigerate it for a bit, it comes back together. So that's it for the tzatziki. We'll set that there. Dill is one of those flavors that's just, again, classic Greek. Fresh dill is in almost everything. So I'm gonna add a little dill to that tzatziki too. And I just picked a little bit from my yard. It's not imperative, but I do love what it adds. Okay, tzatziki's done. We'll set that aside and let's check on our meat. And this is looking really good. Get it up here close so you can see it. <laughs> and always season your food, whether the recipe calls for salt and pepper or not. I have pink Himalayan sea salt here. Again, it's one of those things that's gonna have a tendency to clump up a little bit. Just stick a spoon in there and break it up. Most table salt contains dextrose, which is a form of sugar, and it's actually an anti-caking agent. So if you're really trying to watch your sugar intake, you kind of have to watch your salt intake too. So this has just about finished. It's so easy. The last thing that I'm gonna add since I seasoned it is the same seasoning that we used in the kofta. So I'm gonna do a tablespoon of the paleo powder, which is just, again, a great combination of dry ingredients, and then the cinnamon, cumin, and coriander. And we just let those simmer so all those flavors come together. And I just like to mix it up to make sure they're distributed really well. And as I said earlier, lamb can tend to be a little fatty. If you find that uh, it's collecting um, some liquid that's from the rendered fat, just pour it off a little bit or use a slotted spoon when you scoop it out. If you refrigerate this and reheat it because you've made extra, be sure to store it with the fat. It will collect on the top and you can scoop it off or use it when you reheat the meat because it will be dry if you don't reheat it with the meat. And that looks just about perfect. You get a little taste, make sure it's seasoned properly. Mm. Mm -hmm. Those spices mm. give it just the right flavor profile, so savory, and the onion is just the right consistency, melt in your mouth. Okay, that's done. I'm going to show you how to plate up the Yedo cups. I have some beautiful Boston lettuce leaves here. And I just, you know, peeled them off of the head of lettuce. And I'm going to just scoop those. Move this a little closer so I don't have an accident. <laughs> and I'm just gonna use this spoon to kind of make sure that any liquid has stayed in the pan. And you can fill these as much as you want. You know, you go to P.F. Chang's and you're gonna pay $11 for chicken lettuce cups. We're kind of sick of chicken about halfway through Whole30, so let's give something like this a try, okay? It's a great appetizer if you're having people over for a football game, if you're going to someone's house. I don't know how much we're visiting people these days, but 
something to just have as a lunch on a Saturday afternoon in front of a movie. And it's shareable. You can take each of these leaves and drop it into a little piece of foil and have individual servings. And you can fill these up as much as you want. I like to keep them kind of on the lean side because, well, that one could use a little more. I like to have toppings. So here I have some delicious little grape tomatoes that I cut in half. Just gonna put a few of those on top of each one. And I love the multicolor ones. And these pear tomatoes are so pretty and flavorful. And pickled onions. Again, on my recipe, on my website, you'll find this recipe. I chopped, rather sliced, a red onion. I can cook it in bacon fat or in coconut oil, whatever your preferred fat is. Use a vegetable um, oil, olive oil, or avocado oil if you wanna keep it vegan. Saute them slightly, you just want them to get limp. You don't want them to be still crunchy, but you don't want them to caramelize. Then add three to four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and a cup of water, well, just enough to cover the skillet. You're doing this in a skillet. Bring it to a boil, turn it off. Reduce it, um, sorry, remove it and let it cool completely, pour off the liquid. You have beautiful pickled onions. This isn't really a traditional Greek thing. They use raw onions, but I love my pickled onions and I get a little bit of apple cider vinegar this way. Trying to build as much nutrients into every plate we make. So there's a few of those pickled onions. And finally, a little dollop of tzatziki right over the top. And you can see it's thickening up already. And that, my friends, is a delicious and nutritious dish. Gyro lettuce cups. Let me take a look in the oven to see how our kofta is doing. It should be close. just the right color and you can see all those onions have cooked through and I want to plate this up with my new recipe for cauliflower rice so this cauliflower rice has been simmering for about a half an hour it's got turmeric and diced onion so simple I started with about an on, one onion diced, sauteed that in some ghee, and then I added the frozen cauliflower rice. If you have fresh cauliflower rice, you know, you can use that. This is two bags, 12 ounce each, of the cauliflower rice frozen in the frozen section. Um, so use about 24 ounces of fresh, if that's how you prefer to go. And then I add about a half a cup of chicken bone broth, and two tablespoons of turmeric. It gives it that beautiful golden color. And then I just let it simmer until all of the liquid has reduced and the rice has absorbed it. I mean, this is almost risotto. My mom used to make a Greek rice, which she called pilaf or in Greek pilafi. And it was so rich and hearty with chicken broth and lots of butter. So I'm just kind of riffing on that. And I love turmeric and I love the color it gives it. And the turmeric also helps with the cauliflower flavor. So I'll be putting that one on the website soon. And then you can just place as many of these little kofta on top as you like. I'll just do three so you can see how it looks. Get these out of the way. I love my handy, Randy, handy 
dandy speed rack. <laughs> so there's the kofta on the turmeric cauliflower rice. And yes, this is getting a drizzle of the tzatziki, one of my favorite things to do when I was a kid. My mom always made fresh yogurt from scratch, as did my grandmother, and she always put the yogurt bowl on the table. It was part of every meal. <laughs> so we would take the yogurt and stir it into the rice pilaf, and it would be so creamy and delicious. So this is almost that which makes me very happy. Just put a little parsley on top. And we have a delish and nutrish lamb dish. And these kofta are also very packable. You can put the kofta right into a lettuce wrap or a piece of romaine and take that to lunch with you if you're on the go. So I've shown you the kofta recipe, the tzatziki recipe, how to cook the ground lamb in a very quick and delicious recipe. I'll put the cauliflower rice on the website. The pickled onions are already there. This is a lot of stuff out of a couple of main ingredients that you can prepare and have for a couple of days. I'm so glad you could join me today. Don't forget to look for me at livingdeliciousandnutrish.com or on Facebook. And on Instagram, if you decide to try any of these dishes, please take a photograph and tag me so I can see how it turned out. And I'm always available on DMs if you have questions about any recipes. So thanks so much for joining me today. As always, it's a pleasure. And I'll see you next week with next week's Prep Week 3. Have a great week. Good luck.